Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our third midweek Lenten worship service. This week, we are considering how we are in community with our neighbor. Um, again, we hope you are blessed by this evening worship. One quick little note as we get started this year for Good Friday, we are having or attempting to have an online um, virtual prayer vigil. Um, so we're asking for prayer requests for that prayer vigil. If you would like to uh, make a prayer request for anybody about anything, please send them to the church office, and um, we'll be happy to include that in a, a document we will put together and distribute um, on Good Friday. So send us prayer requests, and we will create this virtual um, prayer vigil to happen during the day on Good Friday as we lift up all who are in need to the Lord on that most, most sacred um, day of the year. So please keep that in mind. Again, welcome to our midweek service, and we are ready to begin. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Behold, now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine upon us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and we, with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Creator, you fashioned us in your image in the midst of a world beyond our knowledge and understanding. Continue to weave us together in community with all created things, and deepen our awareness of the way you connect us to the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the second chapter of Mark, um, where a community comes together to bring a neighbor to Jesus. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. 
Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of our Lord. Like I said, tonight we are considering how we are in community with our neighbor. And I just love that this is the story from Mark that we got tonight. Because, let's face it, I just love this story from Mark. It is one of my favorite pieces in the whole Gospel of Mark. And one of the reasons why is the folks who are coming to see Jesus, these are literally Jesus' neighbors. They're coming to his home. Look how Mark begins the passage. It was reported that Jesus was at home. They came to his house. And just an aside, because this this is, you know, my mind, how it works sometimes. How cool must that have been? Hey, who's your next door neighbor? Oh, just Jesus. You may have Jesus as your next door neighbor. I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know who you live next to, um, but man, is a Jesus as next door? Got to be something. Anyway, these folks who are clamoring at his door, that's, they're there because they know him. Not by reputation, not by what they heard he did somewhere over there. They know him because he's the next door neighbor. He's their neighbor. They're his neighbors. And I love how Mark says what he's doing. He says, I love the way Mark, Mark puts it, he's speaking the word to them. How wonderful is that? Jesus just speaking the word to him. That sounds southern to me, by the way. I don't know if you've ever been to the south, but I'm from the south part of my family. from the deep south. Speaking the word. I, they were just speaking the word to him. He was speaking the word to them. Like, I, the vision I get in my head is like neighbors chatting on the porch. Or they're just standing on the lawn, having a conversation, or they're talking over the fence, or they're gathered around the grill, or something like that. They're just folks talking. He's just speaking the word to them. It's not preaching, it's not teaching, it's nothing formal and structured. He's just talking. He's speaking the word to the people next door, the people who are around the corner, the people who were just down the street from him. Which means, I think, that the folks who bring the paralyzed man to the house, that means they're neighbors too. The man on the mat, the man, this paralyzed man laying on the mat, was he a neighbor too? You think Jesus recognized him? Knew him? He knew him already. He knew he was, oh my gosh, that's the guy from down there. When he says, son, your sins are forgiven, how personal might that blessing really have been? Like that's a term of of neighborliness in the South. Son, You're right. Son, your sins are forgiven. It's like Jesus saying, Son, I know you. I've seen you. And now, today, at this moment, I get to say to you, your sins are forgiven. Because now it's time for me to do just that. It's like Jesus is saying, not just to this paralyzed man, but to everybody who's there at the door, I don't just speak the word, folks. I do the word. Because, well, when you get right down to it, I am the word. 
I wonder how surprised he was by the faith shown by this man's friends. Like, wow, the extent of their love for this man. I wonder if he was a little blown away by it, don't you? I mean, they tore a hole in his roof. They ripped the roof off the front of his house so they could drop this man down to him. That's no small task. It's a big thing to do. I wonder if you can say, I wonder if Jesus was blown away by it. You know, like, 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 like um, when your neighbor does something you didn't think that they would do. Now, you've known these folks, but you never thought they'd go that far. Like, you know, you want to go away and you really can't because, well, what am I going to do with the pets? And some neighbor is going to, I'll take care of them for you. I got it. Go ahead. Have a great time. And you weren't expecting that. How cool is that? How wonderful is that? How warming is that? Or, you know, the, the neighbor who, after a big snowfall, just comes and shovels your sidewalk, too, because they're already out doing theirs. That's nice. We had a neighbor who did that back east. We never had to shovel the front of our house because this one guy just started at one end of the block and did the whole block. Now, we paid it forward because we did the whole side of the street, too, but it's how we did it. Neighbor helping neighbor that way. It's cool when you see that. How about that neighbor who checks on you when they haven't seen you for a while? Maybe you've been sick. Maybe you've been laid up. Maybe you went away. They didn't know. You're not going to, hey, everything okay in there? How you doing? You ever had that moment in your life when that neighbor who you hardly know, you know, the one who never sits on their porch, they never come to anything that the neighborhood does, nothing like that, they suddenly show up. You're having a picnic and they suddenly drop by and say, hey, can I come? You got a hot dog for me. And you weren't expecting them. Or maybe suddenly they come to you and say, you know what? Wouldn't it be nice? You want to come over for dinner sometime? And it turns out then that that neighbor is really pretty cool. Think about that. And see, it's hard for us to think that way because you come to church, you come to a nice building like this, you come to worship service, and we start talking about neighbors in church. We start talking about your neighbor this and your neighbor that. And you know what happens in churches? We tend to talk big. We start immediately running out to a global scale. You know, your neighbor is in Africa, is in South America, is in Canada, is, is in Los Angeles, you know, is in Philadelphia. And that's right. You need to worry about those folks. Um, you bring up on a national scale. You know, everyone is our neighbor. All people are our neighbors, even the ones it's tough to like. Maybe even the ones you don't really like. I mean, we talk that way, and it's good. And usually when we talk about neighbor in church, we end up doing the parable of the good Samaritan. Who is my neighbor? You know, and a Samaritan helps the Jew, and you get the whole conversation about enemies helping each other and all that. And it's all 100% true, and it's needed, and it's necessary, but we're not reading the good Samaritan tonight, are we? We have this beautiful story from Mark. And you know what this story from Mark is? It's local. It's a local situation. Local neighbors, and that's who I want to think about tonight, our actual, literal, next-door neighbors, the folks who live in our neighborhood, on our community, on our street, the people in the house next to you, the people in the house across the street from you, the people in the apartment above you, the apartment beside you, the apartment below you, the folks you see a lot. Even if you don't actually know them, but they're still folks you see. You see them getting in and out of their car, walking their dog, putting out their trash. Those neighbors are who I want to think about tonight. And the reason I'm thinking about this besides Mark is because, well, my wife and I are just moving into our new house in Champaign. Four months in an apartment, we finally bought our house. And the movers brought the furniture on the 4th. So, quite literally, we're the new neighbors. We're the new neighbors on our block. We're the new neighbors of the folks who are already there, and we've already met a couple of them. And, and my, my, my wife was hanging curtains, and she had all the curtains off the front window, and, you know, neighbor walks by, and she looks at Nuna and sees my wife, and waves to her. My wife waves back. You know, they're new neighbors to us, too. And you wonder, will we get along? How are we going to get along with these folks? Who are they? What are they like? Will we make real lifelong friends in this neighborhood? Or are we just going to end up being acquaintances? Does this neighborhood have block parties? Do we have neighborhood cookouts? Uh, something I've discovered here since we moved to Champaign-Urbana is apparently you all have coordinated neighborhood Christmas decorating. 
We drove around and looked at some of them this past Christmas. It was really cool how all the neighbors seemed to work together to create this kind of block of neatness, of Christmas light fun. It was great. I don't know, maybe we'll just nod as we pass and say hi and leave it at that. There's no way to know at this point because we're new. We're the new neighbors. But the important thing is we are neighbors. They are our neighbors and we are their neighbors. And so... At some level or another, we are called to care about them. Whether I know them deeply or only passingly, I'm still called to care about them and to care for them. You know, in some ways, I think one of the reasons we jump off to the global scale and to the faraway place and all that is because it's a little easier to do that. It's easier to have a neighbor some way far off, distant, different, because we know we can keep them at a safe distance from us. We can keep them at arm's length, you know. They're, they're over there. We don't really have to know them. We don't ever actually have to see them, and we don't ever really have to deal with them. The folks who live near you, well, you see them, and you have to deal with them. And you will encounter them. Now, would you get along with all your neighbors? Likely not. Will they be all be your friends? Likely not. But they're all there. They are still your closest reality. So, let me ask you a question. How do you think of your neighbors? How well do you know them? Who do you get along best with? Who you get along least with? Who has a dog? Who has a cat? Who has kids and how old are they? Who has grandkids and how many times have they shown you the 10,000 pictures of the newest grandbaby? Who would come to you for help if they needed it? Who would you go to for help if you needed it? Who cooks the best burger on a grill? Who always has a moment for you? Who do you always have a moment for? It's not easy having neighbors. It's not easy being a neighbor. It brings challenges. It brings obligations. It brings commitments. But neighbors they are, and neighbors we are. And we are literally in community with all of them. Literally in that we all live in the same community. The folks who come to Jesus in our story all live in Capernaum, and Capernaum's not exactly a massive place. It's a small town. It's the same community, the same kinds of folks, lots of different issues in their lives, sure, but they're the same folks. They care about each other, so much so that some of them will literally tear the roof off of Jesus' house just to have Jesus heal their friend who also happens to be Jesus' neighbor. Relationships we have with the folks who live near us can get complicated. We know that. But they also can be beautiful things. And the wonderful thing about that is there's, comes, there's up to a point, there's a way that we can control just how beautiful those relationships are. We can control those relationships in that sense by how we behave towards them. See, that's where it all begins with, in this sense, folks. How we treat others is the beginning of how they will treat us. How do we think about them? How do we treat the folks who live around us? Do we accept them as they are for who they are? Or do we judge them for not being like us? Do we share their favorite food with them? Or do we turn up their, our noses at, oh, that weird food that they eat? You know, Jesus has to deal with some grumpy neighbors, and he just goes on doing what he was doing, healing, restoring, and forgiving, stuff he still does for us today as our neighbor. Because neighbors care for one another. Neighbors become community through caring. Neighbors create community through caring. See, as my wife and I settle into our new home, we'll meet our neighbors, and we'll find ways to care for each other. I truly believe that. It's happened everywhere we've lived. We'll need help, and someone will come along and provide it. We'll see someone who needs help, and we will provide it. That's what being in community with our neighbor looks like, helping and caring for one another. It is how Jesus is a good neighbor in Mark tonight. 
helping and caring for the very people who live next door to him. So, here's what I'd like you to do this week. Talk to a neighbor. Talk to one you know well. And let them know how important they are to you. That's the easy one. What I'd like you also to try and do this week, maybe, is talk to a neighbor you don't know so well. Reach out to them. Learn a little something about them. Try from your end as best you can, and so far as it is up to you, create a little deeper relationship if it's possible. At the very least, just at least think about all of your neighbors and ask God to bless them. Be thankful for your neighbors. Enjoy having neighbors. Care about them. Embrace the community you share, the physical and emotional communities that you share with each other. It does take a community to care for one another. And community is built by good neighbors. So quite simply, folks, tonight, be a good neighbor. Build that, yes, sacred community up. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
This time I invite you to offer to the Lord any special petitions you might bring to God tonight. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new beloved community, the Spirit who holds us in the community of saints, one God, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace, join together in Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this week, folks. Have a great week in the Lord. Be well and be safe. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.